Welcome everybody, aloha, and thank you for joining us uh, in Lillian's Vegan World, the show in Honolulu where we talk about the vegan lifestyle and plant-based diet. Uh, first of all, I do want to say to all of you, I hope that you all are taking care and staying health and safe, uh, safe. For those of you who are affected by the COVID-19, I, I do extend my condolences and wishes and hope that you get back onto track as soon as you can. Today, I am welcoming back my dear, dear friend, fellow chef extraordinaire, vegan chef and cooking in instructor, Chef Paul Onishi. <laughs> Aloha, Chef. Aloha. Good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. Always great to see you and have you on the show, bringing your insight to Honolulu about the vegan uh, lifestyle. How's everything going with you? Well, believe it or not, it's been going pretty, uh, pretty good. I've been uh, very busy and uh, okay. doing constructive things. So, you know, could be worse, but I'm, I'm very blessed. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Today, actually, Chef, we did want to talk about keeping a positive and healthy mindset during this so-called lockdown. I think, you know, all of us are suffering from some form of loss some deeper than others and you know we're, we're all anxious about the future and what lies ahead, what lies ahead but i think all we can do now is let nature take its course get through it the best way we can we all you know have to realize that we're not alone there's always someone here that you know can support you and help you through it but today we are going to talk about things that we can do uh, during this lockdown to, to keep us busy and happy and healthy. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, so Chef, what, what's on your mind? How, first of all, how have you been spending your time? Both you and I, I think I speak for you when I say we are both um, unemployed at the moment as chefs <laughs> and cooking instructors here in Honolulu. So yeah. that has freed us up to be creative. Um, tell us about what you've been up to. Well, for me, I had to make the adjustment um, from actually being involved in 12 different part-time jobs and then having them one by one just kind of disappear. You know, I was teaching with the DOE substitute teaching. I was teaching at Down to Earth teaching at Job Corps, and every one of those opportunities just closed up. So I had to kind of, you know, reprogram myself and see what I could do in the meantime. So I kind of established this uh, culinary sabbatical for myself. <laughs> awesome. A, culin a culinary sabbatical. I'm intrigued. Well, that's one of my list of five things that I do every day. And uh, by culinary sabbatical, I mean that I actually go into my kitchen and I uh, think of all the recipes and different food items I never got to do because I was either too busy, didn't have the ingredients, or just you know didn't have the motivation at the time. But uh, every day I'm doing something from like Indian samosas to Thai curry to, you know, all kinds of variations on vegan food. And uh, I'm surprising myself because I'm actually coming up with some pretty good recipes. And uh, hopefully when the virus lifts, I'll be ready to go back and teach and have a, a full armament of things to, you know, offer my students. Absolutely, that sounds fantastic. And uh, I do want to mention that, yes, uh, Chef Paul is a very um, famous uh, cooking instructor here in Honolulu. So once you start getting your events back together, we will definitely post them for you so that people can come and um, take some of your classes and learn about these new recipes that you've been creating. I mean, that's fantastic. Some of the best dishes I think come about when you're not thinking about it, you're just working with ingredients that you have on hand and using that, you know, creativeness that you have within and, and end up producing like some of the best um, food. I've also, Chef, been 
experimenting here with a lot of Hawaiian favorites, actually. I've been veganizing yeah. Hawaiian favorites and I've yeah. found this completely new Philippine cuisine that I absolutely love. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for me, it's been, you know, the same way, only we're going down uh, different rabbit trails and uh, finding out it's mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It is, yeah. And I think, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about, which is sort of a nice segue into this, this little tip that I have, is while we have all of this time, isn't it a great um, opportunity to start thinking about your health and learning about your health and nutrition? Well, definitely, uh, because I can't go to the uh, Ikahi uh, health gym like I used to do downtown, I just started walking around my neighborhood and doing my, um, you know, 10,000 steps, five miles up and down the hills. And at first it was really challenging, but then I got used to it and uh, walking by myself, you have a lot of time to think and kind of, um, you know, just, just put things in a different perspective because everybody's going through the same thing you're going through. And uh, we all have to find our way to keep sane and to keep uh, productive during this time period. Absolutely. And the fact that it's difficult for a lot of people to leave their homes, I mean, especially for the age to a concern who are in that you know category of uh, very easily contracting the coronavirus. So a lot of people who do have to stay home are finding ways to, to stay fit and healthy. I'm doing my um, yoga here, not every day, I, three to four times a, a week, I'm doing my power yoga. My husband has turned into a fit fitness fanatic, gets up at 5.30 or six o'clock every morning before he starts work. He's uh, working remotely as well from home. And uh, he's working on a day, uh, working out on a daily basis. So it's funny, isn't it? I think there's going to be two types of people that come up, come out of this lockdown, and one of them are going to be people like him who have found this whole new, you know, healthy way of, you know, working out and, and getting it done in the morning, making sure that there's no excuses to put it off, you know, as the day goes on. And I think the other thing yeah. that can happen unfortunately is the other group of people that are going to come out of this heavier than they were you know in that more of depressed sort of state which is really what we don't want we want people to get through this come out of it healthy and you know get back on track so i did want to ask uh, paul if you don't mind i do want to ask you where do you get your protein from <laughs> well i uh i get my protein from <laughs> Garbanzo beans, for one, because as you know, a half cup of garbanzo beans fulfills the daily protein requirement that the U.S. government requires. And I don't know how many people know this, but the actual proportion of protein you get from a half cup of garbanzo beans is equal to a porterhouse steak. Thank you so much for clearing that up. See, I knew I could count on you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is absolutely right. And the thing is, Paul, all of this talk about protein and all of these misguided dieters, I would have to call them, um, are so focused on protein and getting that daily protein when I, I guarantee not people, not many people know how much protein they are supposed to be getting. So according to most research, it's about 0 0.3 three six pounds per uh, sorry three three point zero point three six grams per pound of body weight so if the average 165 pound human person will require about 60 grams of protein a day now the american americans are getting somewhere around 100 grams which is double the amount of protein way more than necessary and on the other hand or i should say on the other hand 
there is one nutrient that Americans are getting less than 3% of the recommended daily intake. Do you know what that is? No, I find I don't. Yeah, fiber. 97% uh, of Americans are not getting the recommended, you know, amount of fiber per day. So if they're saying on, on average, the American is getting 15 grams, you need about double that, you need about 30 grams of fiber. So you just want to fill up on a lot of whole foods, um, apples, pears with their skins on berries, whole, whole grains, farro, millet, uh, black beans. Here's one that's full of uh, fiber that is a snack that everybody loves popcorn. So three mm. cups of popcorn, mm. three cups of popcorn already comes to four grams of fiber. So there's lots of ways you can get fiber in. And according to eMediHealth, I do want to just quote this uh, from the eMediHealth website, dietary fiber promotes healthy digestion and regularity improves gut microbiota composition, helps reduce cholesterol and improve cardiovascular health, helps control blood sugar levels and diabetes, tames appetite by keeping you fuller longer and helps regulate weight and protects you from developing colon cancer. So I just want to, in summary, say the next time someone asks you where you get their protein from, ask them where they get their fiber from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, according to your list, I'm doing pretty good because I have all those things uh, available at home and uh, I'm very fortunate to be able to, like you, be creative in the kitchen and kind of mix and match these different ingredients uh, to come up yeah. with some really interesting food choices. Mm -hmm. Well, vegans are pretty much all rounded when it comes to getting their um, vitamins and nutrients and stuff. So I think, yeah, the average vegan who's eating a healthy, not, you know, filling up on junk food every day, the average vegan is getting all of these requirements, daily nutrient requirements. So you don't have to worry there. Yep. <laughs> all right, Paul, we are, we are going to go to a quick break in a second, but uh, we will be back definitely to talk more about some of Chef Paul's ideas on keeping it keeping it cool during the uh, coronavirus lockdown so do stay tuned everyone and see you after the break hi i'm rusty kamori host of beyond the lines on think tech hawaii i was the head coach for the punahou boys varsity tennis team for 22 years and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships my show is based on my book also titled beyond the lines and it's about leadership creating a superior culture of excellence and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. We're talking to Chef Paul Onishi about how, how we can keep things cool and keep a positive mindset throughout the coronavirus lockdown. So please help me welcome our guest uh, back, Chef Paul, <laughs> our, <laughs> with cat in hand. What a gorgeous yes. portrait that is. Tell us about it. This is a portrait of my uh, cat, Little. And uh, this is a perfect stay at home business and I'm putting it on the screen because this is a college student who's um, being productive during the time of being, you know, at home. And all she needs is a photograph of your favorite pet and she knocks these out in a couple weeks and she's really good at it. She does uh, oils or an acrylic 
And, um, you know, I was really impressed when I saw samples of her work. So I said, I got to get a picture of my cat. So she that just, is so she, adorable. Yeah, she captured wow. the, the, the spirit of my cat, uh, who, by the way, is one of my um, five list of positive things that I do every day, which is spend time with my cat, my pet. Mm -hmm. Yes, I couldn't agree more. As you know, I, well, both of us, needless to say, are animal lovers, but I also have a cat as well. And I know right. that life is just so much brighter and so much more fun when you have a pet. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. No. Yeah, that it's is hard, that is a good point. It's hard to explain. It's, yeah, it's I mean, it just... Actually... Go, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Paul, uh, go ahead. Please continue. It's, it's different from uh, relating to a human being, especially now when a lot of us are kind of uh, incubating and have to stay at home. Uh, you know, I don't have to entertain my cat when he wants to go away. He goes off on his own and then when he wants to come back, uh, when he's hungry or get affection, you know. Mm -hmm. We're pretty independent that way, so the relationship works out very well. <laughs> I know. That, that's exactly what I love about cats. Like, they're so independent and so kind of happy to chill and do their own thing. They don't, they don't sort of hoard your attention or, you know, make, right. make you, you know, expect you to spend every living moment with them. But, yeah, they're adorable, each with their own personalities, like every other animal. And uh, hopefully one day, Chef, the rest of the world will see animals in the same light, each with their own personality, um, with compassion and uh, not want to harm them and, you know, let them be. Just like the, exactly. the, the dogs and cats that we all adore. They all, they're all the same, aren't they, animals? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So what else have you got on your list of things we can do during the, the uh, lockdown or the incub incubation period, as you, <laughs> as you refer to it? <laughs> well, every morning I, I start off my day doing um, my daily devotions and meditation. And that's where I kind of get my mind uh, focused and I get set uh, spiritually for the day and kind of... Um, detox from the previous day and get my mind and my uh, my whole personality set for whatever it is I'm going to do, uh, which, you know, for a lot of people, it's very limited because of the isolation. But there's a lot you can do uh, at home, for example, cleaning up your house. And for me, uh, this relates a lot to that culinary sabbatical I was talking about, because you know, before I used to just get in my car or go to the store just to pick up, you know, one or two ingredients. But nowadays, uh, it's not economically or safe, you know, to do that kind mm -hmm. of um, shopping. So what I do is I make a list of the things I am interested in uh, preparing for the next couple of days or the week. And then I go out mm -hmm. and I actually buy the ingredients and I try to see how many different spin-offs I can do with, for example, a bag of potatoes. Uh, rather than just let them sit there, I'm, you know, one of the things I do in the kitchen is try to come up with different ways I can spin off on different ingredients I have. Uh, and in that way, I've come up with so many different variations uh, culturally, um, not not just vegan, but if people wanted to add meat to it, definitely it would be uh, a possibility if that's what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, Chef. While we while we are talking about food, I, I would like to ask Melissa to play a video that I prepared of the food that I've been um, just whipping up in my kitchen in the past month. So we'll just let that play and talk over it. Lillian's Kitchen. So this is all plant-based, obviously. And as I mentioned earlier, I am sort of 
focusing on um, veganizing some of Hawaii's favorites. So lots of things here. What you just saw previously was a, a dip made from bread, breadfruit, ulu dip. So there's all these, uh, uh, that's a high tea that I hosted just before the, the lockdown started. I think you saw some vegetable samosas there too, Paul. I'm a huge fan of those. <laughs> cauliflower, buff, cauliflower buffalo wings. There was some Spamish musibi, musibi, one of my new recipes for a vegan luncheon meat. Um, teriyaki tofu, twice frozen. When you freeze tofu twice and drain it after each freezing, it takes on a very interesting uh, texture, which I think a lot of people should, oh, there's my Hawaiian sweet rolls, which a lot of people should definitely test out. Wow, that looks good. So that's a little bit of a taste of Hawaii. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, definitely your advice is, uh, is excellent, Paul. Experiment in the kitchen, have fun, you know, find new healthy ways of eating. Don't get sucked into the takeout phenomenon that's happening here although i highly and absolutely uh do want to support the restaurants that are, are really feeling this this yeah isolation and and you know everyone everyone's sort of doing their part to try and support these restaurants and what have you but again in moderation i think we also at the same time do need to think of our health and you know, eating takeaway every night is probably not the best thing to do. But we do have, here's, a, here's one of my tips, we do have uh, local farmers that are actually delivering food straight to your door. And here's a list of just a few, FarmLink Hawaii. You can uh, look, on, look online to get their details and uh, call or contact them if you do want your fresh produce delivered straight to your door or uh, do a pickup. So, there's Oahu Fresh, Kahumana Organic Farms, Mao Organic Farms. They all range between about $20 and $55 per produce box. But isn't that an amazing way to help su support the farmers? And uh, if a box of fresh produce is delivered to your door, you're going to definitely use it. <laughs> so. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I just came back this morning from uh, Mari's Garden out in uh, Mililani. And uh, okay. they have quite a few acres of hydroponic uh, fresh lettuces. They supply local markets and down to earth. And nice. their, their stuff is no pesticides, no garbage in the soil. And uh, I, I could tell the difference because I had a baby romaine package. I thought this stuff will never keep, but uh, you know, I actually had it for three weeks and it's still as fresh as it was the day I bought it. Really? Pretty amazing. Yeah. Are yeah. you, are you, a, do they deliver their food or is it just pick up? Well, you, uh, I went there today and now they're doing an online ordering and then they bring it to your car, uh, okay. which is pretty good. And uh, they also represent quite a few different farmers. Uh, on the island too. So uh, every given day, there's something from papayas to lettuce to all kinds of uh, different types of produce. Mm -hmm. And uh, the quality factor is pretty amazing. And I walked out of there with about $20 worth of fresh vegetables and fruits uh, that I probably wouldn't be able to get retail. Uh, and I don't think the quality would be as good, but um, definitely support the local farmers. They're doing a good job. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Chef, the other thing I did want to mention was the Tabata exercise. Have you have you come across this or heard heard of it? It's the four minute. No, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, <laughs> educate me on that. So I'm curious. All right. Yeah, so I'll quickly explain. So it's called um, it's called the ta Tabata exercise. It doesn't there, there's lots of names for it, but basically, it's uh, it was developed by a scientist that was working in the Tokyo Institution of Health, I think it was, working with the uh, Tokyo Olympic skating team, and he developed this form of exercise. Basically, what it is is 
20 seconds of high cardio exercise with the 10 minute, uh, sorry, 10, 20 seconds high cardio, 10 second break. And that is considered one round and you do that for eight rounds, which comes to four minutes for a full completion. Researchers are recommending you do this two or three times a week, um, take a day off, take a break one day off a week. But within four minutes, studies are showing that it, it gets your um, metabolism up. It, it's enough cardio to, to, to uh, sorry, to act as like a full 30 minute or 60 minute moderate ex uh, form of exercise. So the 20 seconds of exercise you do, you can do anything like jumping jacks, you can run on, you know, jog on the spot, you can do push ups. I've done yeah. a combination of it. And I'll tell you, it's the longest four minutes of your life. But after it, you do feel you do feel like you've uh, accomplished something in such even though it's only such a short amount of time so tabata exercise have a look at it online might be something that you want to do if um, you don't enjoy exercising for long periods of time <laughs> chef we are coming to the end of our show i do want to thank you so much please uh, give out a message to our viewers before we say goodbye what was that again Please say goodbye to our viewers as we close the show. Be safe, be careful, wear a mask, keep your social distancing and uh, take, the, take as much as you can to stay at home and be productive. Very nice. And eat lots of fiber, exercise when you can, stay healthy, stay safe, stay positive and do trust that, you know, faith we all have to hold on to faith don't let go of faith because we're all in this together and we will get through it thank you everyone so much chef paul an honor and pleasure having you on the show again i look forward to seeing you in person <laughs> <laughs> <God> soon <bless> <laughs> take okay. care everyone take care aloha